apprentice who worked here for three years. Her name was Erica, and she really, really grasped the aesthetic content. You know, she was able to take a set of numbers or a sketch and come up with a, with a real idea of what it should look like as an object. That's not a common thing, by the way. One time I walked into this antique shop, and he had an, an ordinary German box clock on the wall but it had a very nice gong to it. And when this clock struck, it had this huge resonance, this huge, deep reverberation. And it was the most amazing sound I think I ever heard. I had been, you know, a fine arts major before that. And it was novelty for the sake of novelty. There was no idea of any kind of ingrained tradition. Um, and when I got to clock school, it was really the first time in my whole life that I had encountered a situation where I was expected to do things that were to be done in a specific way and done right, and if they weren't done right, done over. Uh, that, was, that was a revelation to me. And the idea that there was something, a task to be accomplished exactly right, was, was a little bit idle. So that was the beginning of my course into, into clock work. You ever designed the clock yourself? Or? Oh sure, all the clocks that I've made are designed entirely by me. Designing a clock can take, designing and building a clock can take a year. It's, uh, it's tremendously labor intensive. Attention to detail is important. The other thing with clock making is that you, you really need to be a sequential thinker. Clock making is very much do A, then do B, then do C. And if you do A, C, and B, a lot of times you'll have to go back and completely redo the thing because you've done the things in the wrong order. Everything about New York is constantly being reinvented. I had exposure every year to things that I would never see in a lifetime in Minneapolis, St. Paul, or, or St. Louis, or, or the Detroit suburbs, or anything like that. New York is probably 50 miles from the epicenter of American clock manufacturing in Connecticut. You know, places near Waterbury that were the central location of clock manufacturing. Erica Johnson, as I say, worked here for about three years, learned the craft right down to the to the last detail, learned clock repair, learned clock design, and um, you know she was she learned all the all, all the things in the machine shop, um, you know learned the, the computer, the, the CNC machine programming, uh, learned all the manual machining. I tried to impress upon her the necessity of keeping your eyes open. That was what I tried to instill in her was the idea of. Of be open to everything that's you know everything that's out there. Um, everything may not work, but until you draw it and look at it, you don't know that. And if you don't draw it and look at it, you'll never know anything more than what's the lowest common denominator. People who are successful on anything more than you know the than the routine kind of clean the clock clockmaker are, are people who are able to see a broader picture, who are able to understand how one thing is like another, how there are cross connections, um, how you don't have to you don't have to be limited in your you know your imagination to what has been done before. Um, you can look for, for clues in, in the entire world as to what is is a useful thing. As a person who's interested in clocks, not necessarily as a, as a clock maker, is the fact that a clock becomes kind of the fabric of your interior life.